Chris, John, congratulations. You guys have made it into the third round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from American history. General Patton's saber. Good luck. We'll see you in four days. Today, I'm going to build the actual blade part of the saber. I'm making a ladder pattern to mask this billet. I'm stacking 1085 and 15 and 20. So ladder pattern to mask it, it's a simple pattern. I'm going to weld it, put some layers into it, and then cut it with the chop saw, and then draw it out. This is a large blade, and there can be a lot of things that go wrong with this much forging. So I'm not comfortable putting all my eggs just in that one billet. So my plan is to make a 5160 billet. So I have insurance that I'll have a good blade for this build. I got lots of eggs. I got tons of eggs. And you guys need some eggs. Anybody want eggs? <laughs> Today, I hope to get the blade quenched. So I need to get this fire going. Hmm. I've picked up a little bit of a curve in this thing. I do notice that it's not an exact even heat up in the fire. There's more heat towards either end than in the middle. I don't want to waste too much more time chasing it out. There's always a chance that a lot of it will come back out once I dip it in the quench. I believe my blade has gotten hot enough. I am ready to quench. Well, my blade was heating up. It wasn't an exact even heat up in the fire, so I do still have a fairly significant S-curve warp to it. So I quickly throw it between a couple of big chunks of wood to see if I can address the warp. If this doesn't work, I'm screwed. OK. I've got a very, very slight warble right towards the end, but I'm positive I could take it out with the grinder, so we might be in good shape. Feel pretty good about that. I think I'm getting very slightly soft, close to the hilt. Rather than go through the quench process again, I think I'm just going to go with it, keep my fingers crossed, and pray to the gods. This morning, I'll figure out which blade is going to be worthy of going forward. I really want the Damascus to be my sword. So I start grinding on it. And right away, I start seeing some delaminations in this edge here. They want to fall apart. I'm going to strap the Damascus, save it for the back strap, and move on to the 5160 and make that my blade. I'm not going to take a risk with $10,000 on the line. I go to the forge, get it hot, and I go in the quench tank. When I pull this knife out of the oil, I have a nice, straight sword. It's the morning of day four. I think I've got myself set up really well for a final day of construction and refinement. Once I have my wood block shaped for my handle, I start figuring out how I'm going to try to make this back strap. Got this old, kind of cool looking spoon of unknown metal. I think it's some sort of steel plated in some sort of other metal. But it looks cool, and I'm going to beat and bash and bend it until it fits around the back of my handle. All right. I get it glued up to the rest of the sword. Now once my epoxy sets, it's going to be time to move on to sharpening. So this blade is sharp as a razor, and it's ready for testing. It will cut. Today, I got to put everything together, put the final edge on the sword, and test it. So it's time to get the guard started. So we will go up to the plasma cutter, and we cut out a piece of sheet metal that's going to become our guard. I'm a horseshoer. They have horses. Put a horse on it. Horse head for the cavalry sword. This is my version of the Cowboy's Cavalry Sword. Say that twice. I'm going to acid edge the guard black, and I'm going to put some enamel over the top just to preserve it. And then find the inside of the guard with pig leather. So I'll make sure it's nice and comfy for their hands. I finish assembling the sword just with enough daylight to be able to test it. This is whiskey. Hey, it worked. I'm finished building this crazy sword. And why not go out with a bang? America! Welcome to the kill test. Your sabers look deadly. 
find it out, I will take your weapon, deliver some slashes and thrusts on this ballistic stun. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Yeah. Cut its heart out. <laughs> it's just not right. All right, John, first up, let's talk about the handle construction. It's a little bit on the big side, but I'm able to hold on to it. Now, your edge, it's very sharp. And it is a pleasure to wield because aside from looking beautiful, it'll kill. Thank you very much. All right, Chris, your turn. Are you ready, sir? <laughs> yes, sir, I sure am. All right, Chris, let's talk about your saber here. First up, what I love about it, it's got a sharp edge. Every swing I do cuts. The one thing here is that you did pick up a little bit of a bend right here at this junction. It's warped a little bit, but it pierces and cuts, and most importantly, it will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Bladesmiths, for a strength test, I'm gonna take your sabers, and I'm going to beat them and stab them into these field obstacles. Now, I'm not really concerned about what your swords do to our obstacles. I want to see the opposite, what they do to your swords. John, you're up first. You ready to go? Ready to go. Nice job, John. I like the blade. The sword itself overall is on the heavy side. The handle is a lot there, a lot of extra weight. It does help counterbalance quite a bit, though. Still got a good edge on it. There's some pretty heavy strikes on there, and the blade bent but came back to true. It's all right, tight, and straight. Good job. Thank you. How you feeling, Chris? Good as I can be, sir. All right. Right here. Yeah. Oh. No cuts, no blood. Lucky day. Chris, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure in our strength test, and unfortunately, you cannot continue with testing, which means you cannot be the Forge Fire Champion. Please exit the forge. Come on forward, pal. I did have a small issue when it got to my heat treat. That's all right, man. I didn't want to risk a second quench because I didn't want to make it overly brittle. I do have some regret about that decision at this point. Of course, I would have liked to be the Forge and Fire champion, but I am really proud of myself as a weapons maker, and I plan on getting right back in my forge when I get home, and I'm going to move forward as ever. Well, John, General Patton was known for being a tough guy, and you made a tough and sharp sword that really honors his name. Congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. How do you feel right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man, come on over <laughs> and shake our hands. Good job, brother. It's a beautiful sword. Yeah. 
I'm the new Forge and Fire champion. You did a phenomenal job on that hay trade. Thank you, sir. I'm proud of what I did, and been a fun deal. Hey, can I get a Forge and Fire butt buckle now? No butt buckle. Come on.